Well guys, good day. It's day three of nine days in the north. Today, I'm actually starting off with my education bit, I'm learning how to trap. So I'm doing my trappers course. Every day, we've got a little bit of that to do. Today, we're doing a practical part. So we're gonna do some skinning, doing beaver, muskrat, and a raccoon. So I'm gonna jump in there and get some of that done. And then later today, we're actually gonna go on a duck hunt with uh, buddy Adam, who's also a trapper. Well, here we are in the, uh, we're gonna call it Ryan's Skin Shack, I guess. We've got a- You can't call it Ryan's Skin Shack. <laughs> I can call it whatever I want. <laughs> he doesn't mind. He's like, go ahead. So we got everybody out here, got the whole crew. Um, we're on our lunch break, as you can tell. Ryan's Skin Shack, why not? It's perfect. He'll like that. Maybe he'll put a placard. So it's just basically, it's as we're being run out of this house, so. We got a bunch of muskrat. We haven't done a muskrat yet, but uh, Jeremy, Jeremy's got some bears too. Yeah, we brought lunch. <laughs> wild lunch. In style. Wild Everybody rice. else is eating sandwiches. Wild rice, bear, wild apples. Yeah. Wild cranberries. It's good to need some salt though. This is wadobo. Wadobo! Oh, wadobo! We gotta wadobo this up. That's better. Is there enough in there? <laughs> Is there not enough? <laughs> scraps in there too. Some beaver scraps and some yeah. raccoon fats and throw it in. hind quarters and throw it right in there. Why not? So we uh, just finished up the beaver. Uh, where did the raccoon go? It's over here. The kind of the running theme here is I get to do the Southern Ontario animals. Unfortunately, Jeremy's kind of paired up with me. We're going to do the raccoon. It's over here. And uh, the other fellows are going to do a uh, beaver and we might team up on uh, a muskrat next. So this is like the practical portion of the trap course. Um, we've been doing in class throughout the week and we got a couple more classes. Tomorrow we actually have to set traps. So that's gonna be interesting. I might film myself making some kind of set and he's kind of hinted at that I'd probably have to do a coyote set because that's more common in my neck of the woods. Most of the people are local guys. So if you guys wanna take the course, I would highly recommend Ryan Tamlin. And I'll put that information uh, down below if you guys decide that that's something that you want to do. It's run over nine days, so it's probably more practical for people uh, who live around here. But uh, I'll be doing most of my trapping, as you know, uh, in southern Ontario. And we have, we have some beaver, but we mostly have raccoon and uh, coyote. We do have a lot of muskrat. So Ryan uh, made up some uh, sets for us. So how these work, it's a snare. Uh, is it, this is for, uh, it's set for beaver. So you put it up in the, in the uh, grommet clip here and that'll hold it. And then when the animal goes through, it pulls tight. And now it's set, the animal can't, it can't back it up at all. Uh, but obviously we can't because we're smarter than animals. And again, if it's really muddy, uh, when I catch it or if I catch it in the creek, what I'll usually do is I throw it back in the creek, sort of rinse it off, pull it out. It's not gonna hurt it any. Cut around. So what I do, now it's all in preference. I know where the knuckle is there, I'm gonna cut that one tendon. Now when you're pulling the pelt off, it's easier if the leg's off. And you've actually got the weight of the carcass sort of trying to pull it over too. Again, we shook it out, got all the dirt out of it. We're gonna bring it over to the beam. I'm gonna do half, probably the top head half I'll do on the beam, and then I'll do the rest on there. So I can typically 10 minutes on the beam to do a beaver top to bottom is what it takes uh, and again whatever works for you guys if you don't have a beam right away do it all on the board from sawdust on there so we're let it all bite together so you get to a point where you know it's gonna move but it's gonna go slow so what I like to do here and this is where you want to make sure the pelt's clean because I'm gonna use the sharp side and I'm just gonna shave it down turn over to the dull side see how easy that came off that's kind of lighter right? yep Look at the angle of my fleshing knife. I'm not like this. I'm using it, I guess you could call it like a saw. And then I throw it down. Um, you wanna try and keep it on that center line. You can see the line that goes right down. I'm going on the second red line in, and I'm thinking that's probably a good spot for this one to sit. And then this sort of, this will give you an idea. Basically just lift it up, you know, off the board. And it's fur can dry. 
Well, it'll let the air get in there and everything will dry. Okay. Yeah. My first muskrat? Yeah? Yeah. There you go. There you go. One for the memory book. It's almost done. Just got to get some more food off of it and then we can uh, sell, the, sell the fur. Yeah. For five bucks. How much is that worth? Five bucks? Yeah. Five bucks. Just stand them up over here. Did everybody pass? Oh, I think so. Everybody did a good job. Yeah, we're actually learning things. Mm -hmm. I was kind of surprised that I would actually, I mean, I'm not totally surprised that I would learn things, but I, I've learned more things than I thought I would. Put it that yeah. way. We've been around this stuff for a while, but we're all, you're always picking up little <clears throat> finer details when, sure. you, when you do it. Well, there's so much stuff about the equipment that we would not have any experience with, right? No, exactly. Yeah, and little tips and tips and tricks, and mm -hmm. it's like learning a whole new community, um, new culture, mm -hmm. really, mm -hmm. right? That you don't actually get from a book or watching a YouTube video. You yeah. have to actually experience in person. The dernier trapper. Who's the last trapper? <laughs> you never heard that? No. It's a very you no know, really. So the last trapper is a it's a movie. Mm -hmm. Right, and it's the story of a guy who made a living trapping, and but he was the last guy, okay. you know, because it's a dying art mm -hmm. or lifestyle, I suppose. Yeah, right? well, the price, the economics of it all. Yeah, you can't make money trapping. It's a losing proposition. It's more like a service to. Yeah, I don't think you. I don't. I don't know. At the end of the day, I think. I think it's just a lifestyle, right? It's a. It's a management thing. It's a lifestyle. It's the thing that that you do to actually make the you know the place a better place mm -hmm. right the place mm -hmm. a better place it's all about keeping the populations in check chris you're going to be exposed to raccoons so you're going to do uh, a raccoon okay and then so a couple people can jump on like wherever they want to learn by all means and yeah i'll let you guys get started and begin oh there you go guys there's a a raccoon i already skinned it out put jerry jerry and i on the raccoon so we gotta, we still gotta flush it out. It's obviously taken all apart. The other crew is working on a beaver right now. I'm gonna throw it on the flushing board here. You ready, Jer? Are you busy? Yeah, no, I'm just looking. All right, Jerry's just studying the beaver business. So he's gonna throw it on the, call it the flushing board? Flushing beam. The flushing beam. So we're turning it inside out. Combination with some wood shavings. You wanna do that right now or no? You wanna do a bit first? A little trick of sawdust because the they're so fatty, so it's gonna soap up some of that. And if it was any warmer out here, all that fat would be dripping on your legs. Which would be good. And Jerry's gonna take a, this one's pretty blunt. Yeah. And just scrape away. So you wanna do that so it doesn't rot. The other ones we scraped with a knife, the muskrats just with a knife. So the feet get cut off here and the ears off because there's there's no value to that unless a, unless somebody's going to do a mount with it where they're going to mount the whole thing but this is going to uh not be used for that somebody's going to buy it for some other purpose i think we've got a step we just to shake it out oh yeah we got to shake the sawdust out yeah, just scratch yep. it. Okay. do the same on this side and typically what i do for the tail i'm going to pull up 30 30 uh, yep. so you have to pull it down. Yeah. Yeah. Oh guys, that's it. Uh, we're out of school. Now we get to go over. We're going to go meet up with Adam. See if we can't get ourselves a goose. I want a goose. I already got a dog. Let's see if we can't get ourselves a goose. So I'll, I'll see you guys over there. Got uh, Adam Craig outdoors. You still doing the channel? No. Not as much, huh? No. I'll put the link down below. You guys can go check it out or whatever. But he's doing a lot of woodworking now, so I'll link that up below. If you guys want to buy uh, what cutting boards is the mainstay? Yeah, charcuterie boards and spatulas. Fish cleaning boards. Pretty much anything. Fish cleaning boards. Yeah. Fish tables. And they're really nice, really nice boards. I actually have one. I showed it off a while ago. Maybe I can find some B-roll of that. But still use it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Good. It's at the cabin. If not at the cabin, it's at my house. Ready to go? Yeah. We're all set. Ready, Jeremy? I'm Jeremy. Ready. Jeremy's riding princess. Born ready. Not quite princess. No. This is, there's <laughs> another word for where I'm riding, I think. What is it? Uh, it's not really coming to mind right now. <laughs> it is a little bit of a bumpy ride, so hang on. It's 
get down to the pond and get some food. You smelt it or you yeah, saw I it? Yeah, smelt it. You smelt it? Yeah. It's crazy. You knew it was here from earlier. No, I smelt it. <laughs> They've got like a, I call it a beaver smell. You ever been to Science North where they have that pet beaver yeah, yeah, or yeah. that yeah, porcupine? Yeah, yeah. I remember that one as it a kid. It smells like a smell. beaver. Yeah. Well, it smells like a porcupine because it's a porcupine. But so anytime I come through here, if I get a whiff of that, I know he's around and yeah. there's always, it seems like there's always one here. I've killed probably three or four. Does it smell like armpit? Yeah, B.O. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, they can't really wash themselves. <laughs> yeah, it's hard on them. You guys see that blob there? That's the porcupine right there. So we could have some porcupine for dinner. Yeah. We'll <laughs> save him for after. Let's save him for later. It's going to be backup plan. <laughs> Stay there. <laughs> yeah. But well, we know where he is, roughly. <laughs> we can always come back. That's funny. That is funny. Here we are, we're at the duck pond. This is, uh, Adam actually built this uh, trap cabin. Yep. Family trap cabin, we'll call it. Something like that, right? Shack. Shack. So uh, the situation is there's the ponds down here and there might be some ducks sitting in there, but if not, we'll definitely sit out here. So we got a chance to kind of regroup, get our gear together and see what's up. We'll do a sneak down and we'll see what happens. All right, guys, I'm gonna, Put my face covering on here in a second. Let's we'll set the uh, camera up here. We we'll get the GoPro rocking. We we'll get the, the Tacticam on the gun mount. We'll see if everything works. I'm we'll gonna shot from everything. But, uh, Jerry's gonna go to the far bank in case they decide to skirt us. And I think Adam's gonna either come over back over here. I think he's gonna come over here because he's got a gun too. And he's gonna shoot. Let's get ourselves some dinner. Shooting a uh, X-Bolt, Browning X-Bolt A5 Semi. I got some uh, BB duck load but I'm not gonna start with that because it's mostly gonna be ducks here or did I say duck load I might goose load need some big heavy shot shell stuff I'll let Adam get over here I'll do a bit of calling he's got a spread out here I don't know if you can tell but there's a bunch of decoys here geese and duck so should draw us in but they can land anywhere in here never know what's gonna happen here's that BB load three inch uh, BB, big shot. Knock down big geese. with the ducks so we're gonna throw in some goose decoys in the mix for when uh, well last light because there's a good chance that the geese are gonna come in here at the end so Adam's just gonna go grab a bunch of their field decoys that are turned into floaters The only luck we had so far is when uh, Adam was out in the boat twice <laughs> setting up the second time when he set up the geese decoys and then the first time when he was fixing them and then nothing's been back since. They didn't like the look of the pond. I don't think they saw anything. Stick around tomorrow. We're gonna to be on uh, 
day four of nine days in the north i'm gonna be back in uh class well not class i'll be doing my field sets so you can join me with that and uh, maybe we'll get another hunt and maybe we'll come back out we'll see what adam's up to he wants to have us back out here we'll get up to some kind of shenanigans in this whole series stick around there's more to come